Hey guys, welcome to my latest video. Uh, I've not been on hiatus, I just have not had much to blog about. I haven't really bought much from Lush, I've been trying to review products and I will get them all published in the coming couple of weeks. But I wanted to talk to you about something that has come up recently that really, I wouldn't say bothers me, but just has irked me off a little bit and lots of people have been messaging me asking sort of demanding exclama exclamations yeah demanding exclamation marks that's the teacher in me coming out demanding explanations for things that Lush are doing and they've asked me to be the one to give them an answer for why Lush are doing it and the truth is obviously I don't work for Lush uh, officially um, as in I don't, I don't work for Lush, but I kind of feel like I do because I clearly make them some money with my reviews and things. But I, I felt like it's got to the point for some people and myself where I need to speak up and I need to find out other people's points of view and what is going on. So as the title is called, why all the exclusives Lush? And um, this is what I want to talk about today. So. We all know that Lush are a massive company and what makes them so unique is the fact that the fan base behind the company are so supportive, um, quite obsessive in certain areas, I was in the past, um, and so um, loyal to Lush. They really are. I mean, some people do step away from Lush, it becomes too expensive for some people, people just sort of move on, it's a natural progression. Um, but. Overall, Lush fans are different from most other cosmetic companies because people will go out there and they'll love a lipstick or they'll buy a shampoo or so whatever, and then they run out and need to replace it, so they'll just go and find the one that like they like or is on offer. Whereas Lush fans tend to want to immerse themselves in the whole community um, and everything. And every product that comes out creates a buzz, creates an interest. People want to buy it, people want to try it. And Lush know this. Lush are not in any way unintelligent. Um, they know exactly what their fan base love. Um, and, and you know, they, they kind of play to it in a way. So Lush are one of those cosmetic companies, cosmetic. I sounded a bit American there, cosmetic. Cosmetic companies that like to do exclusive products. And let's be honest, it builds an excitement, it builds a buzz. When the Lush Kitchen was first introduced, um, it really built up the community. I really feel that the Lush Kitchen, having pictures of all the people who worked there, um, having weekly menus where you could buy these exclusive products until they sold out, it really built up this excitement. Um, but what was good about this was that you knew beforehand what the products were going to be most of the time and you knew for most people who were immersed and sort of saw every week what the menus were they were ready and waiting yes there were times when things sold out because they were super popular but overall people managed to get what they wanted or at least knew what was coming out from Lush I feel in the past maybe six months maybe for the most majority of this year I have I have felt more and more confused, slightly frustrated, annoyed, you know, about what Lush are currently doing and I can't for the life of me really understand why. I am lucky enough that I sort of sit in the middle of the the consumer side of things. I'm very much a Lush, Lush consumer and I'm very much involved with the community. On the other side I do I am privy to a little bit of information within the company and I've also got experience with people who work within the company so I have sort of both sides of the spectrum. I can see in the majority of cases why Lush are doing certain things and I can also see from the consumer perspective um, how we feel about things and, and so on. So I sort of get the general gist of things on both sides and what I'm finding at the moment is that I'm siding more on the consumer side and being absolutely confused and just like my oh, I just don't know I don't know how I feel about what Lush are doing at the moment and I, I'm failing to comprehend why they're doing what they're doing now this is not an attack on Lush this is a genuine what is going on Lush please explain a bit further um because I've always as you know been an advocate of Lush I really promote them because I love them not because I'm paid by them or whatever it may be you know I really genuinely love Lush but it's getting to the point now where I am 
confused and a little bit annoyed with Lush. So five minutes into the video, let me explain what I mean. This year we have seen the release of so many exclusives. We've been introduced to the Lush Labs, which is happening once a month, which I think is a great idea. Um, the only issue I have with Lush Labs is they bring out these products in limited edition, they disappear once a month is gone or once they're sold out, and then we don't really have any idea whether or not they're coming back because the idea was that they'd get consumer response, consumer reviews, decide what was popular, what would work, what would not work and bring them out. But what I'm finding is products disappear. I have no idea whether they're coming back. Products are suddenly randomly turn up in stores. So I don't really know why Lush are not sort of communicating with the community regarding what is coming out. So people can get a good understanding of the product ranges in stores, but that, that's not a major thing. My problem I'm finding is the amount of exclusives that Lush have been bringing out and exclusives that are so exclusive that they are completely um, segregating the community and only allowing a very small majority, minority of people to enjoy these products. So I'm talking about, for example, Witch's Brew, um, which is hat, which is hat fun, which came out in Oxford Street uh, a week ago. I think it was a week ago, two weeks ago, a week ago, which suddenly, bam, Lush Oxford Street posted on their Instagram. Uh, by this point, I think half of them had sold out already because there was just under a hundred, I believe. And by the next day, they'd gone. Nobody knew they were coming out. Nobody had a chance to get them unless they happened to be near Oxford Street, in Oxford Street, or could get there very, very quickly. And then the majority of the world were like, oh, well, they were really cool, but I'm guessing that's it. Um, I started feeling like that and I still feel like that. I've been super lucky that somebody has approached me and was able to sell me one of theirs. So I have one coming to me and I, I'm so grateful that somebody managed to reach out and offer me this one, offer, or this, offer me this opportunity because I was working on that day and I didn't find out until the end of the work day. And it was like, well, okay, that's, that's great. Thank you, Lush. So I missed out on that one. Um, luckily enough, I haven't, but most people have missed out on that one. Then we have like the Rainbow Brighton bath bomb, which came out for Pride, uh, Brighton Pride, which is fair enough. A great cause, a great um, sentiment, but only exclusive to one store in Brighton for the weekend of Pride. If you couldn't get to Brighton, you didn't know somebody there, you weren't willing to pay a hundred pounds or whatever it was to get to Brighton. Wow, you missed out on that one, you know, again, Maybe it'll come up on eBay, a lot of money. You can pay triple, quadruple, whatever you need to do um, to get one. But the rest of the world, pff, sorry. Uh, then we have the big Japan store. Oh, we're going to bring out like 89 bath bombs. They're only going to be available in the Lush Japan store. So the rest of the world, pff, unless you're willing to go to Japan and pay £600 for a flight and then try and cart 89 bath bombs back, unless you know somebody over there, unless you live over there. Sorry guys, these bath bombs, yeah, maybe a handful of them will come out at some point when we can be bothered, but the rest of you, sorry, you're missing out on those. So yeah, that that's great. Um, thanks Lush for that one. Um, then we have like the Lush showcase. Now I was super lucky to go to the showcase. I was super lucky that I got about 98% of the limited edition rarities that were available. The hair, hair marshmallows, all the different hair products, the bath bombs. I managed to get all of the limited edition exclusive bath bombs at the showcase that were from the Japan store. Um, and I managed to get so many other products. Now since then, nobody's talked about, like Lush haven't talked about any of these products. I don't know if any of them are coming out and there are people all around the world that are going well okay they sounded quite cool but man I might see them I might not see them who knows um, and this is talking from somebody who's managed to get most of the items um, I'm not going to be able to get all the Lush Japan items I'm sure maybe somebody will be super generous and send me a handful of them maybe and I'll have to pay a fortune to have them shipped over uh, but it's just for me getting to a stage and maybe everyone disagrees with me and yes okay Jen, they are just cosmetics. You don't need them. No, I don't need them. And actually I've moved away from materialistic things. I don't buy myself um, things anymore. I don't need things. I don't hold any value in things. I hold value in people, in places, in memories, um, experiences. I don't hold, I don't store lush. I don't keep books. I don't do any of that. And I don't need these products. I know I don't. So I should just go, yeah, okay. They're just bath bombs. They're just hair products. You haven't got them, never mind. And I am like that. I don't walk around with a sullen look on my face thinking, 
oh, you know, my life's over. I couldn't get this product. I couldn't get that product, whatever it may be. But I'm just thinking of why Lush do this because it is not building excitement. I did not look at that picture from Oxford Street of that fun bar that I didn't know whether or not somebody would be able to get one for me and go, I'm so excited, I might get one of these. It was like, oh my goodness, can I get one of these? Like, is it possible? Oh, no, it's not. And then a few days later, luckily, it's managed to happen. But for me, I am not excited by the Lush Japan store. Yes, I'm excited for people who live over there, who can get there. Wow, amazing. Like, I genuinely, like, I'm so happy for you that you can try these bath bombs, and I hope they're amazing for you. But I'm not excited myself, you know. It's, it's like, okay, that's nice, but I, I, can't, I can't get involved and get excited by the process. Because aside from being thankful that people can experience that if they can get there, I can't experience any of that. I can't try those products over there. So I'm not excited by that. I'm not excited by an exclusive that was available in one country for an hour. Like, and, and for me, there's just so many products coming out all the time. And Lush, no. And I know that I am a massive consumer of Lush. I buy everything I can get my hands on. And that is because... I want to try everything and I want to have a fully comprehensive blog and I know that I'm very behind at the moment it's because the last two weeks it's all for me about family while my partner's still here he leaves on Sunday I have five weeks by myself in London so I will be working reviewing working reviewing and having all the showcase products all the Christmas all the Halloween everything updated for you guys to have a look at but for me it's about having that comprehensive online guide for people who want to find out about Lush. So for me, it is important that I get these exclusives because I want to have as fully comprehensive. If I miss a product, it does, I do have that slight, <clears throat> you know, like it doesn't affect me that much. I don't get upset or angry, but I just feel a bit let down because I think, oh, you know, I would have really appreciated being able to try that to review it, you know? Um, and that's just a personal thing, but not only just me, because there are so many people in the Lush community that want to do the same thing, not because they want to blog or review, because they love their company, they want to support Lush, and they want to try everything that Lush do. And they're just bringing out so many things that I think they're starting to devalue these products coming out. People don't get as excited by these products because they think, well, yeah, okay, Lush, you brought out these six shampoo bars, but you know, last month you brought out another 10 items here. The Lush Showcase saw us bringing out a hundred items here. The, this store's doing this, this store's doing this. Like, where does it stop? Then we've got all the Halloween, then we've got all the Christmas, then in like a week's time, the Valentine's Day stuff will come out. And it won't, that's just an exaggeration. But you know, it's not long until the Valentine's Day stuff will start showing up. And, and then before you know it, you know, it's Mother's Day and it's Easter and it's Valentine's. And well, I said Valentine's, you know what I mean? Like, it's just constant bombarding of these items. And it's got to the point where exclusives are not really exclusives. They're just like, oh, okay, more products. And I feel like Lush are devaluing some of their products because there's too many. There's, there, there comes a point where there's too many exclusives and exclusives become too exclusive that it excludes people from around the globe and they just go, okay, I give up. I give up. Why? Why am I bothering? Why do I bother wanting to get that bath bomb? Because it won't come out. So never mind. You know, I've missed that one. Pff, I'm not interested anyway. You know, it actually turns people away it puts people off it doesn't build excitement it builds i hate to say it but for some people i'm sure it builds some resentment like why can't i buy that product why is it only exclusive to this country or why is it you know like i don't understand i understand exclusive products when the the seasonal ranges come out i understand that it's like limited edition it's available for like these six weeks of the year Everyone across the globe can buy online, go into shop, try these products. If they love them, they can buy a few to store. If they don't love them, that's okay. They're going to go away soon. And it sort of changes up the range in shops and online. So you get that buzz, you know, like people like such as myself who've tried every Lush product available on their website, every regular product possible. So having like three bubble bars that are brand new, new scents or whatever it may be, excellent. You know, it builds up that excitement in which you go back into the shop again to buy more. You know, some people only go into the stores to buy the exclusive. So, you know, it brings people back in the store. I can see why they do the exclusive products. They get more sales. But when it comes to 
bath bombs in one shop in one country in one place for one hour one minute whatever it may be it's got to the point where it's just ridiculous and there's no communication from lush themselves it's like oh guys did you notice that actually they now have the the solid shower gels or they now have this bath bomb or they now have this in this shop and everyone's like well okay is it is it staying permanently is it limited edition is it only in that store you know it begs all these questions that lush fans ask but nobody knows because lush don't communicate anything and i know they've always been big on no social media you know it's all about the fans and what they have to say and they lead these sales and they lead these reviews because they're honest and if it's not good you know we're very transparent in that way but for me, I'm just like, there needs to be some communication because it doesn't, for me, and maybe I'm wrong, for me, it doesn't build excitement. I just think, oh goodness, what's coming out next? You know, uh, like the ectoplasm liquid perfume that came out, that was supposedly coming out for a Halloween release. Some people said it was going to be a permanent member of the range. Some people said it was just going to be limited to Halloween. And it's like, okay, it's only come out in about three European countries for no reason at all people are telling us that the ingredients aren't correctly matched well how comes you can have it over in those three stores but everyone else can't get their act together and make the same perfume with the same ingredients in england and you know whatever countries and then it's like okay now it's disappeared and sold out is it coming back one day when they fix it or you know like i know this is a long video a long ranty video and i genuinely don't want to put loads of stuff on Lush, I'm just speaking honestly and saying the lack of communication just and the, all the exclusive products of just, for me, separating and segregating Lush fans around the world. I don't think it's building up excitement. I think it's building up anger, resentment, annoyance. Maybe anger is a strong word, you know, annoyance. Lush fans are turning themselves away and putting less effort, there's less botherance because they're just getting to the stage where they're like, I don't know, I don't know if these products are coming out, I don't, like, will I see it again? I don't know, what's the point of buying it anyway because I bought one and I love it but I don't know if it's coming out again. The Lush Lab's coming out again, should I buy 10 of them because I love it or should I wait and see if it comes out in shops? I don't know, uh, I'll just buy the one if it comes out, it comes out, you know. It, for me, it's doing the opposite. I think it's damaging Lush in a way. I mean, their sales are probably going up. They're probably excited. They've got amazing ideas. The Lush Labs concept is great. It's really getting the, the consumers involved. But then it's like, okay, we're using this as a tool to get consumers involved so they can help us to build these products, make them better, expand the range in stores and online. But then we just take products away. We don't communicate. Some come out, some don't. Who knows what's going on? So I feel um, that there, there needs to be something more because when the Lush Kitchen were, were working as they were, you know, they had the weekly menus and then they would have the lives, you know? Um, so we could, we could listen to what they were making and why they were making and when they were coming out and what times they were coming out, you know? So there was some communication and that brought the community together it expanded the community, it built excitement, you know, this exclusivity, and you could tell they were listening and thinking, okay, this sold out in 10 minutes, so guys, we're gonna put another batch out at this time, you know. So the Lush Kitchen wasn't perfect, I'm not saying it was perfect by any means, but there was communication and it did build excitement and I could really feel the buzz around the Lush Kitchen menus, you know, which is why I love doing the weekly menus, why April does the weekly menus, or well, she did, you know, it builds that excitement, but it's just now, I'm repeating myself, I've got to finish in a minute because it's almost 20 minutes. It's just at a point now where I am confused. I don't know half of these products, whether they're coming out, whether they were just one-off items. I've missed a handful of items that I have no idea where I can actually buy and if I could ever buy again. So already in my head, I'm just thinking, oh, those products aren't going to be reviewed and it's just going to be an annoyance for me. And I just don't feel excited by Lush releases anymore because A, there's so many of them, you know? It's, it's just like giving a kid toys all the time. There comes a point where the appreciation goes down and down and down because they think, oh, more? Okay, more, how am I gonna, how am I gonna afford this? Yeah, can I afford this, you know? And in terms of the amount of products coming out as well, it's just like, you know, Lush know there are people out there that want to buy everything and they're sort of punishing those people in a way because it's like, oh, you want to buy everything? Well, yeah, here's here's like 
five body sprays and 10 perfumes, that's like 700 pounds, which for most people is a lot of money, even if they've got a job such as myself that pays well because I've worked for 10 years as a teacher, but even I can't afford it, you know, but there you go, there's your, your body sprays and your perfumes. And a week later, here's another 10 bath bombs. And then two weeks later, it's the Lush Labs release, it's another 90 pounds. And then all this, the Christmas range, and there's another 500 pounds. You know, it's just constant. So it's devaluing the exclusive, exclusivity when the products come out. It's causing people to really have to strain their bank accounts. And yeah, people might say, but it's greed. Then don't buy it all, you don't have to buy it all. But people want to, that, that's their, their right to be able to buy it off they want. Um, people such as myself have a reason because we want to try all the products and I want to review them for my blog. Some people like to collect Lush products so they want to buy them all so they have them as a collector. Absolutely their right and they can do so. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, so many products all the time so we lose the value of the products that come out, we lose the excitement and then just having these random exclusive products coming in for 10 minutes, being put in one place in one world, in one world, in one world, I'm getting tired of this video, putting these products in one place, in one city, in one store, whatever it may be, it's just getting to the point where you're like, oh, what's next? Like, what is next, Lush? Like, please stop, like, please stop right now. Like, I have a massive bag full of Christmas things. I have a massive two shelves full of Lush showcase exclusives. I've got all of these shampoo bars that have come in that I've got to try, which take me a while because I need to try them in my hair for multiple days, straight weeks before I can give a fully comprehensive review. And I know I'm one of a few that do blogs, you know, do a blog. So most people are like, well, I don't have to worry about that. But, you know, I just, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, too many exclusives, not enough communication. And I just want somebody to tell me why. I don't, I'm not going against the company. I will still buy everything, but I just think I can see and hear and feel within the community, which is the most important part for Lush, because these are the people that go out and support your company, you know, and in promoting your company. I just feel there's this sort of collective sigh where people are just thinking, oh, you know, Lush Labs would be such a good idea if they did this. Exclusive products would be such a great idea if they stopped doing this, you know, and I, I really feel that as a community. I mean, please correct me if you think differently, but please also, you know, support and, and, and maybe explain to me why you think they do the things they do. But for me, as I say, right at the beginning, 10 million years ago when I started this video, I feel like I'm sitting on the fence, um, in terms of I, I'm on both sides. I, I have my, no, my one little toe is dipped into the company side of things and I know a little bit more than quite a lot of people within the community and one little toe is dipped into the consumer side, the social media side, you know, the communicate, the communication, the community. So I have both sides here and at the moment I can see sort of both sides, you know, but I, I, but I can see more of the community side this time. Now this time I'm not like, well, Lush are doing this because of this, because I generally don't know. I don't know the reasoning behind why Lush do the things they do in the way they do it. Aside from I understand why they don't do paid advertisements, but I don't get what they're trying to achieve here. Because also for me, this video is going to be an hour long. Let's just put it out there. It's going to be an hour long. For me as well, like, when their products come into stores, so they, they create these innovative products, you know, these new solid shower bars or this, that and the other, and you just think, when they just slip them into the store, you know, you go into store one day, whoa, okay, we have these naked shower gels, we have this, we have this. It's like, well, don't you want to promote these things? Don't you want to build an excitement? Guys, in the store, we now have these. Like, these are amazing, you know? Rather than just people kind of go, like, off the offhand, did you, did you know that no, those, these products were, like, in store now? Like, I think, I think they're permanent. Like, really? Oh, well, well, you know, maybe one day I'll... Uh, I'll buy a few maybe, you know, you know, and then pff, move on. People have forgotten about it. You know, they're just integrated into store. And for me, I'm like, you see any other company in the world and they've, they've produced a new flavor of cookie. They've produced a new donut. They've produced a new slice of cake. You know, you, you get my drift here. I love desserts, but a new product, let's promote it. You know, let's get excitement. Let's, you know, in Lush's case, let's, let's send products to like, 10 members of the community who could do something really silly with the products and people are getting this buzz, you know. Jason and the Argan oil solid shampoo bar is back in store, guys. Let's have 
10 lush community members like having to do silly poses with this or you know some really lovely pictures they can they can send people to post on social media or just do something to build the excitement so the community are talking about it and people know but i bet there are so many people watching this video that they're going really jen wow okay i quite like that one maybe i'll buy one next week and they don't know it's come back in store i only knew it came back in store because somebody else told me and it wasn't like promoted on Instagram or whatever it may be. So I just, I think, I think Lush are, you know, cutting themselves short. I think they could build so much buzz. They're so innovative. They're so creative. They have innovative, creative bloggers, you know, fans, consumers that could do so much for them and would want to do so much for them. But they're sort of like all of their resources are there and they're just sort of slipping these products in store, in store, word of mouth. But people are just like not really talking about it. So this word of mouth thing isn't working because, you know, one person will post it. Ten people will want it. Three people will get it. The other seven will give up and the rest of the community won't find out for six months that this product even existed. And when they do, oh, that came out. Oh, OK. I didn't hear about it. And they move on. So please lush please respond to me this isn't a negative rant at you guys i haven't gone off you at all i'm going to go and have one of your bath bombs right now and maybe have time to review it um if i've got a little bit of time i don't know if i have but yeah like i please explain to me like what's going on because i'm not just saying i'm not just promoting myself and saying lush you could you know i could do things for you but there are people such as myself you know such as all the big bloggers that i read about and smaller people, like not physically smaller, I, you know, I just meant like smaller bloggers or just consumers who don't blog but post pictures or just post baths or whatever it is. There are so many people out there with this excitement for Lush and this buzz for Lush and they want to do something with their talents and they want to do something with their passion. And rather than using, not using them, but rather than using their talents to help them to create something, create a buzz for you and also because they want to, you just sort of like, I don't know, just, oh, it's okay, you know, we'll sell it no matter what, just put it out on the shop, it's okay. You know, it, it just for me, it's, it's, going to, it's going to bite them in the bum. It's going to bite them in the bum one day when they realise the community is like going downhill for whatever reason, multiple reasons, and I'm going to be, you know, me and April and a few others are going to be just talking to ourselves on Instagram, like it's going to be echoes, you know, like five likes on Instagram, you know, this bath bomb, because only, there's only five consumers online anymore. You know what I mean? So I just want to know what Lush are doing and they could they could do so much more because they are, as I say, super innovative, super creative. They have lots of passion, lots of drive, lots of important morals and ethics behind what they do. And this should be promoted and celebrated all the time. You know, I think Lush at the moment are becoming a little bit like a lazy teacher. You know, they could be an incredible teacher, super engaging, giving their pupils the most amazing education possible. And, and then these, these pupils will take away just more than they could ever imagine or hope for. But instead, they're just sort of sitting there like, yeah, OK, here's a worksheet. Do the worksheet. Um, yeah, and you, yo, you can have a sticker for it. You know, you've got five out of five. Have a sticker for it. Yeah. OK, off you go to break time, you know, and they're just not. They're thinking it's okay i'm a teacher i've got a job they're not going to sack me they can't see me in here you know you know so they're a bit like that at the moment they're not using their resources and i don't know if they're necessarily i, I would just like to know please like jack constantine or something you know um any one of the family or any one of the lush pr team or anyone please like put into my brain i've got some space i think put into my brain the thinking behind what Lush are doing right now so I get a better understanding because from my perspective as a consumer as a member of the community it's a little bit confusing it's not exactly the best method for getting excitement out of your fans and um yeah it's like a bad joke that's gone down badly at a party you're sort of like oh you know really but yeah that's my video why all the exclusive Lush why lack of communication 30 minutes of ranting. I need to go and have a Lush bath now. I still love you, Lush. I still love you. I just wish that you would, um, I don't know, I wish that you'd be a little bit more, I don't even know what that means, guys, but let me know in the comments below what you think about this video. Um, 
as in not what you think about the video about the special effects or the, the decoration behind these are all uh these are all things from various places my partner or i have been visiting um but i mean just in general like what i have to say whether you completely disagree with me completely agree with me have ideas about why they're doing it or just want to know like me like what is going on lush um I can't promise the next video, I don't know when the one's going to happen, when the Lush haul's going to happen. It's just like, I am just like Lush. I don't know when I'm going to do anything next, I'm just going to suddenly throw one out there and I hope a few people watch it. But until next time, which could be tomorrow, it could be a year's time, who knows. Uh, have a lovely weekend and I shall speak to you very soon. Keep checking out my blog, I promise you. I don't know why, I'm, why? that's not a promise, that's like, no. I will have reviews on lots of the Lush, I'll have reviews on all of the Lush Showcase products in the next four or five weeks before Christmas. All of the Christmas products, all of the Halloween, all of the Lush Labs, Lush Labs, Ibs, Ibs. Yeah, I need a drink. And uh, yeah, I've got five weeks to kill. Um, and I, I've got nothing else to say, I need to stop, it's been 32 minutes, take care, bye!